गुड मॉर्निंग पीपल waiting for people to join uh, let's see Okay, those who have joined the broadcast will post their <coughs> names in the comments as part of the so attendance. The broadcast Seems to be some issue, internet issue at my end. Uh, should get resolved in a couple of seconds. Let us see. Fine, I'll just. Uh, mark the attendance of these uh, students here <clears throat> any reasons why students have not joined in today on with some other lecture somewhere else. Or am I stuck with uh, some issue at my end? I'm not very sure. students uh, whatsapp has stopped working i don't know why anyway <clears throat> uh, okay this was the last one then this is the next then the next then the next 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 i'm just recording your attendance okay so Lakshata Patila, I have already put in your attendance. I think uh, there will be one more to come, which I see on my, yeah. No <clears throat> okay, one more. Uh, well, I'll mark the other attendances when I come back uh, from having Piyush Vankhede. Vankhede is a very popular surname these days. Just joking. 
नशीस ओके सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ एनी फर्दर डिले या माय नेट सीम्स स्टेबल नाउ एंड लेट मी शेयर द स्क्रीन विथ यू ऑल this is what we are supposed to be starting with sorry saturdays are a bit comes of hurry anyway disha survey is also present uh okay as i said that uh, when one is to study about uh, the surface of this particular earth okay when i say surface i am rather referring to the land surface there are <clears throat> uh, many theories regarding the operations on and around land as such and you see this is a graphical uh i won't i would rather say an imagination imaginary map of the world wherein the whole <clears throat> setup tends uh, seems to be put together when we speak about uh, continental theories or continent development theories as such uh though we have only one of these theory as as a part of our syllabus as such uh <clears throat> it would not make much sense or i would rather say that uh, one would not enjoy uh, the whole the, the whole a sense of how uh, and and what happens with the continents particularly because the scale at which the continents move spatial scale and of course the temporal scale they move over millions of years and a human life is what an average max 70 80 90 years as such so uh, studying them needs uh a lot of referencing as such <clears throat> and that is why when we speak about these continental plates or continents and so on and so forth now there is a difference between a continental plate and a continent and in fact uh, later on they are they are called as plates rather than uh continents or continental plates these are a few difficulties that uh, we see in the earlier theories as such i don't know how much of this Uh, we would be in a position to cover today but uh, it's a very interesting part of uh, uh, <clears throat> geomorphology where we we try to study uh, where are the continents okay or rather why are the continents placed where they are uh, as of now and have they been there throughout the uh, history of the earth why have they been not there if they were not and uh, what has happened to them in that particular process and that's why geological understanding geological time scale is equally uh, important <clears throat> uh we move ahead to understand a few basic things before we actually move into uh, the theories of continent development and so on and so forth we all know that uh, uh, 71% of the earth's surface is covered with uh, oceans and uh, Uh, say say the northern hemisphere is called as the land hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is normally called as the water hemisphere you can see here how and rather why would they be so because uh, you will see that when i photograph the earth from the northern hemisphere or the north above the north pole this is how or this is what i should be clicking <clears throat> on the other hand of course not whole of it would be visible in this particular way because the equator would pass through this so i would be i would say that this is a geographical liberty that this photographer has taken photographer in the sense this imager has taken this is not an actual photograph as such when we say that the <clears throat> equator would pass through this and this line here so probably the area here and the area here should not be seen when you are looking at it from above the north pole as the geographic north pole as such uh, when you are focusing on it from the south pole this is how it would look like this would be the antarctic continent and this would be australia new zealand of course not to scale you can easily make it out uh, this is new zealand here and these are the indonesian islands okay this is the southern part of uh, south america we should 
have been in a position to uh, see uh, South Africa also, southern part of African continent also. So, uh, but this gives us a fair idea, though this is not an accurate explanation, this gives us an idea as to um, how much of land is there in the northern hemisphere and how much of water is there in the southern hemisphere the reasons for being for for them being called as the land and the and the water hemisphere respectively as i said though not exactly to the scale what is to the scale more so is you can what you can see towards the right hand side of your slide okay this is the northern hemisphere and you'll see that uh, this is the land part of it and this is the sea curve of it as such Okay, uh, what this diagram means is uh, this is 0 to 90 degrees in the northern hemisphere. This is 0 to 90 degrees in the southern hemisphere. And they have divided it into uh, units of 10 degrees each. Okay, and uh, they have tried to show in uh, how much of uh, land and water are there as far, sorry, as far as the respective oceans, uh, respective hemispheres are concerned you can obviously make it out here that the land is less in the southern hemisphere and the land is more i won't say sea is more sea is less the land is more comparatively the sea still remains to be in a larger proportion even in the northern hemisphere it's only that comparatively southern hemisphere has a very low land content and southern northern hemisphere has a higher land content as such we can also see that uh, uh, say say the amount of sea around this area this curve here is huge okay as far as land is concerned you'll see that land material is more between let us say 30 degrees of latitude to around 70 degrees of latitude okay you, that also means that you have lesser amount of land near zero degrees as such and uh, as you go down you'll see that while here you hardly have any land around 90 degrees here you have a lot of land around 90 degrees the reason being that here you have the antarctic continent which comes all the way down to 70 uh, degrees <clears throat> south latitude from 90 degrees south latitude so you have it but then uh, interestingly you'll see that between 70 and 40 these 30 degrees of latitude have very low uh, land content okay it again increases to some extent here uh, as i said that this line here Okay, this line here, uh, it represents the total area of the surface of the earth, the total area of the surface of the earth. Okay, because the earth is sort of a sphere, they have translated it into an explainable uh, surface and that is what you can see here. So, uh, within this area, within this area, this is the sea part. So, we can say that the sea part is more in these latitudes. The sea part is minimum around 70 degrees latitude and uh, uh, one can take a globe and search for 70 degrees latitude and of course you can uh, identify the amount of land expanse around 70 degrees 65 70 degrees of latitude and the lessening of uh, 65 uh, uh, lessening of water bodies around these particular areas uh, as well having said that you see that uh, we could very well say that somewhere around uh, this part here, so this is 55 to 60. So this should be around uh, 62, 63 year. Okay, it's, it would be very interesting to check whether around this particular latitude you hardly have any land. Okay, this is what okay uh, you should learn from observation. Just by hearting things is not going to be enough. Okay, this is this we are much beyond what you would say the age of information this is actual actually information age but to be an advanced learner you have to understand or you have to transform the information into knowledge that's and and that would be uh, done only when you keenly observe what you are seeing you have your own views on that and uh, that makes you a, a, a more competent student of that particular subject as such so two things i would like you all to see is uh, around uh, 62 uh, degrees let us say 62 degrees let us see if uh, there is uh, much of uh, uh, water or not and in fact if you remember i have spoken about this in an earlier lecture that uh, around this area 
के और बियॉन्ड दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया ऑल लैंड इज एक्चुअली कॉल्ड एज द सदर्न ओशन सो देर कुड बी अ वेरी वाइड पॉसिबिलिटी दैट डेफिनेटली यू गुड टू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ लैंड अराउंड दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया एज सच एंड वॉट इज दैट आई वुड से दैट बियॉन्ड दिस पॉइंट हियर ओके दिस पॉइंट हियर दिस इज द सॉरी southern ocean okay i have spoken about this in an earlier lecture as well <clears throat> so at the start of the southern ocean let us check whether we have a uh, a lot of land and and uh, this could also help us to understand that that is the possible reason why uh, you have a circulation around the south pole of its own and uh, in fact it is this cut between these the land on two sides of this particular line which possibly led to oceanographers uh, eventually deciding that okay let us have this southern ocean uh, beyond 60 degrees south latitude and uh, thus all the water around the continent of uh, antarctica uh, could be identified or rather has been identified as the southern ocean I said I have been a, a few busy, a bit busy morning. So uh, I have uh, just missed out on a few basic things that I was supposed to be doing, like wearing a watch and so on and so forth. So can I, so that I can have a, a view of the time as it passes. This is <clears throat> another uh, view of for the same thing. It's called as the hypsographic curve. Okay, I would say that this is a more generalized curve. hemispheric distribution of land uh, i would say this is more scientific okay and what do we learn into this particular area you'll see that uh, the average height of land 797 you could say approximately around 800 okay then uh, the average depth of the ocean 3686 so you could say uh, 3700 meters Oh, this is all in meters oceanic trenches we'll see that the deepest trench here we did refer to it when we started with the interior of the earth uh, 10911 so it's nearly 11 kilometers deep the mariana trench is 11 kilometers deep so obviously this 8 and a half kilometer 8.8 km uh, the mount everest is obviously <clears throat> uh, lesser in length or height i would say when you compare it with the mariana trench uh, as such then they have divided this into various parts so of course the mountains on one side and of course you have the oceanic trenches and in between you have uh, uh, say you would have the uh, plateaus here which they have not because this is an hypsometric curve you will have the plains here they are more interested what is there as far as the uh, oceanic surfaces or submarine relief as it is called okay the fourth topic that we are going to take up uh, this is just an introductory part to that yes such <clears throat> and then beneath the water level this is the sea level you can see here and beneath that starts the continental shelf which is also a major uh, fishing area for the world okay we'll, we always uh, we always have learned this in geography that uh, countries having a very wide continental shelves are uh, are leaders in fish production one of the reasons why india doesn't have that amount of fish catch is that our continental shelf is very narrow the continental shelf gives way to the continental slope and you go deeper you are going to have abyssal plains and then eventually you end up at the oceanic trenches uh, as such okay you'll see that uh, uh, <clears throat> i would rather say that beyond what around 4 5 6 7 mm. beyond 6000 meters you have very less of uh, ocean depth beyond 6000 similarly as far as mountains are concerned above 4000 meters you have very less amount of land surfaces above 4000 so this is what and this is necessary the, to understand when it comes to uh, uh explaining a diagram in front of you of course this is the hypsographic curve and then they made a hypsographic uh, histogram out of it okay the highest point is obviously going to be here as far as continents are concerned <clears throat> uh 
uh, let us move ahead okay though we speak about uh, wegener we are rather going to speak about wegener extensively uh, it is not that wegener was the first person to come up with uh, the theory of uh, the fact trying to explain that the continents are on the move climates change and internal forces external forces trying to explain all these things okay scientists have been wondering about <clears throat> Uh, what exactly should be the scenario? Because there are a few strange facts about uh, the, this, this particular planet. You'll see <clears throat> that we've already said that a lot of land gathers together in the northern hemisphere. A lot of water gathers together in the southern hemisphere. <clears throat> now, what has physics to do with this? Uh, we need to see into that. And add to that further that you'll see that as far if you see, if you have ever seen a world map properly, you have traced the world map properly as far as your mind mapping is concerned. <clears throat> Even if you imagine it right now, you'll see that uh, majority of the continents, majority of the continents see tapering towards the south. So the land surfaces taper towards the south. And uh, you'll see that uh, a corollary of this or an uh, uh, vice versa of this is that uh, oceans taper towards the north. As such. These were some geometric aspects that uh, scientists were looking at and they found some similarities, they found some anomalies and they found some differences and that's what made them uh, think and work into what would be this and what should be uh, this, this, this whole arrangement all about. Okay, we don't find much of this literature in olden parts or ancient history or ancient geography as such. Uh, However, you see that since the industrial revolution, development of technology, scientists started looking into various uh, aspects. And uh, thus, by around 1875, this guy called as Loth Lothian Green comes up with one of the first theories, uh, not about continental movement, but he's, he's referring to uh, the arrangement of oceans and continents as such. Okay, and he calls it as the tetrahedral theory. What is a tetrahedral theory? You'll see that students of chemistry will know that this is uh, a tetrahedron. How does this look? Uh, it's, it's, it's very simple. I take uh, uh, four equilateral triangles and I put them together. This is number one. This is number two. Number three is, of course, on the other side of it. And of course, this is number four. So four triangles put together. Let me tell you that there is a difference between a tetrahedron and a pyramid. A pyramid has a square base. A pyramid will have a square base. A tetrahedron, however, will not have a square base. It's four uh, equilateral triangles fitted into each other. Now, uh, Green says that uh, basically uh, to, to just highlight the idea of what green had to say is that uh, uh, <clears throat> the earth was slowly cooling down and contracting the upper part of the earth I've, I've just put up a small abstract from the whole explanation of his theory as such okay it actually runs into a couple of pages i thought that this would be the best explanation of what uh, green had to say for us as far as this whole theory uh, is concerned so the basis of the Lothian Green's hypothesis is that uh, uh, it's the Earth is slowly cooling down, and while the sun cools down, the upper upper part, okay, which is uh, the crust, you could say, what we have learned as far as a part of it, study of the interior of the Earth is concerned. Obviously, because it comes in contact with the atmosphere, which is at a lower temperature, and uh, the upper part of the earth cooled first and did not exactly fit into the slowly contracting inter inter part or inner part as such and therefore it became wrinkled and resulted in ups and downs okay these ups and downs in the form of valleys and mountains of course later it was seen that it was not exactly that but because this is one of the earlier theories we have to start this is the starting point of people understanding to understand and putting forth a theory Again, uh, I won't say that Lothian Green is the first to have done this. There could have been people who have been thinking about this, but they did not at any point of time bring it down on paper. So in other words, you could say that it is such a situation where the surface of the earth is changing into a form in which the larger a proportion of the volume. In fact, there is a natural law that the sphere, 
the body with the smallest surface in proportion to its volume tends to collapse into a tetrahedron. Okay, this that, that is why this theory is called as a tetrahedron theory. That okay, the sphere, the uh, the body with the smallest surface in proportion to its volume tends to collapse into a tetrahedron, which has the largest surface in proportion to its volume. Green's theory had an apparent basis on this particular fact as such. He says that uh, this is okay, the corners of these tetrahedrons, he says, are the major continents. Okay. He's, he referred to them as shields, you could say. And the sides of these tetrahedrons, you'll see that here, you'll see Pacific Ocean is written here in Atlantic Ocean is written. Okay. And uh, one side, of course, is the uh, <clears throat> Indian Ocean as such. So he says that the flatter sides of this planet are more to be the uh, oceans and the tapers of these tetrahedrons are uh, or rather could be the uh, continents which rise above the mean sea level that is how he tried to explain it however you'll see that there are going to be a lot of problems when he actually tries to put it up as far as uh, 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 scientific theory is concerned you see that uh, for for all the functions to run on this particular planet the the planet needs to be on a very stable ground now you'll see that as far as the tetrahedron that he refers to is concerned you'll see that uh, he has places he had placed now this is the normal tetrahedron uh, green actually inverts the tetrahedron he says that this point here is the antarctic continent and then you have these other continents, okay, or rather shields, as he says, okay, this is Antarctic, this is the Laurasian shield, this is the Baltic shield, and this is the Angara shield, uh, he refers to all land masses, okay, however, uh, we all know that in geometry, okay, a tetrahedron stands true if uh, stands still and balanced if it is placed on uh, its, its, its uh, broader base, but Green wants us to hold this in a inverted fashion. Now, if you try to uh, balance out a tetrahedron in the way Green tried to, it would be very difficult. So, uh, mathematicians said that if the basic model of a tetrahedron does not function uh, uh, in in the way Green wants us to, okay, the tetrahedron reflecting into the shape of the Earth, and of course, uh, the whole process that he tried to explain would not. Uh, sustained because it was not in a true balance. So the first idea, I would say the first uh, uh, documented idea did give away and uh, people started looking or rather kept on looking for new theories as such. Eventually, you'll see that you have uh, what are called as tectonic theories and uh, uh, there, these are the major theories. Okay. As I said yesterday, that plate tectonics is one of the most popular of the theories as such. But before, besides that, you have the continental drift theory, which we are going to do in detail. And you'll see that the journey from the continental drift theory to the plate tectonic theory is uh, supported by the convectional current theory, in the theory of seafloor spreading, and of course, polar wandering as well. Okay, You'll see that uh, each of these are seen here in diagrams as well. Okay, This is the continental drift theory. We're going to go to the details of this later. Then, of course, this is the plate tectonics saying that the world is divided into the plates, tectonic plates. Now you will see why we should not be using the term uh, continents because a lithospheric plate is not necessarily only a continent. It is a lot of submarine relief that is surrounding the continent also. So the reason why uh, the word continental crust, continental plate, gradually gave away to tectonic plates as such. okay and having referred to that you'll see that you have something called as the pacific plate here also okay this whole thing is the pacific plate we would not have been in a position to identify plus uh, pacific plate had been considered only the land masses as such and then uh, this is the convectional current theory okay here that uh, you have, if you, if you remember, I did refer to this, that uh, you have plumes of energy along with magma, etc., which try to come out from here, and they spread up the, uh, and, and of course, the warmer part 
uh, moves upwards modular uh, within the mantle moves upwards it's the upper 700 kilometers remember this is the asthenosphere that we were referring to as such okay so uh, it, it it tends to come out from here in the form of magma and it spreads outwards now if this would have been a continuous process the earth would have grown in uh, size as such the fact that the earth has maintained its circumference all around is that uh, though we have volcanic eruption and creation of new crust at such points the convergence or rather the divergence points of convectional cells see this is one convectional cell this is one convectional cell. the mental mantle is going to have many such convectional cells at the top of this convectional cells you have volcanic eruptions and that is how the volcanic eruptions will uh, will 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 solidify and you'll have ridges here okay the mid-atlantic ridge is one of them uh, and uh, you have such uh, uh, mid oceanic ridges in other um, oceans also so you'll see that crust starts being pushed away in opposite directions from the ridge but then uh, you'll see that it has to compensate for so you'll, it is said that these movements of these crustal surfaces uh, eventually lead to them subsiding into the other side of the convectional convectional cells okay and they'll go down into what are called as trenches here okay they go down and as they move down they'll obviously melt and that will form the new uh, magma which is then going to be poured out once again so these cells and cycles keep on happening over millions and millions of years and obviously that also leads to movement of continents over millions and millions of years this is more an explanation into the same thing you'll see that uh, the asthenosphere is pushing out uh, lava here and they are cre being created into ridges the, the the plates are moving and uh, as they move you'll see that the other end of that particular plate is being pushed down as it pushes down which is called as the subduction zone here you can see here the subduction zone as it is being pushed down it's going to melt and you're going to have some amount of it coming back here the other amount goes to the center of the cycle and then there is going to be a rollback such areas are also called as hot spots i don't know whether how many of you all have looked into this hot spots and uh, uh, you'll see that as far as so this point here okay there is one hot spot that i want you to uh, look for in this particular uh, region i had actually planned a very interesting uh, animated small clip for you all but uh, i forgot to bring it up on the screen obviously we'll get it up at in uh, at, at some other point of time uh maybe next week yes so uh, these are the important theories that run around that around which the whole uh, story of uh, continental building and destruction and movement moves around and uh, that brings us to one of the first theories as far as continental drift is concerned yesterday we did refer to the fact that uh, uh this this whole idea about continental drift came to Wegener where you know, one of his students was uh, uh, had had cut out pieces of land or uh, oceanic surfaces or sorry continental surfaces and this he, he reported to him that uh, uh, it seems that you could fit in these each, into each other and this was called as the uh, jigsaw fit you have these jigsaw puzzles okay and that's why this word is a very common word to be used in the continental drift theory you'll see that it is 1915 written here actually this is 1912 13 but this was in german language and it took two years to be reported in english language as such and that's why you're going to have it in that particular uh, way okay he was a german geologist and meteorologist uh, by the name alfred wegner and he proposed the theory of continental drift he says that the earth's crust is slowly drifting atop a liquid core a liquid core the fossil record supports and gives uh, credence to the theories of continental drift and plate tectonics wegener hypothesized that there was a gigantic supercontinent how much 200 million years 200 million years ago is somewhere when uh, 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 the dinosaurs were there so this relates to the triassic period of the uh, geological time scale okay he says that that supercontinent was called as pangaea i said i did refer to this yesterday also 
and before that it is said that uh, we have had rhodania 1 and 2 okay so rhodania 3 is something that uh, human beings discovered and uh, alfred wegener uh, names it as pangaea pangaea uh, due to some internal activity broke up into two supercontinents smaller obviously two smaller supercontinents the uh, the, the the northern one was to be called as the Laurasia, and the southern one was to be called as the uh, Gondwana. When does this happen? This happens during the Jurassic period. So this starts in Triassic, and uh, the breaking of the supercontinent happens in the Jurassic part of the geological time. And uh, the third part of the Mesozoic era is the Cretaceous. Okay, by the end of the Cretaceous. The continents were spreading into the land masses that look like more of our modern day continents as such. Uh, it is interesting to note that the continental drift theory was not accepted for many, many years. One possible problem with that was uh, what basically what was the force? What was the driving force for whole was particular all of this uh, um, theory? K. which Wegener was not able to. Uh, explain basically because he was not a very hardcore geologist he was more a meteorologist so every time he's tried to force his theory to uh, through uh, people would say that okay if even if we agree to the fact and you'll see that why it became eventually more and more difficult for Wegener to explain this as such uh, those who believed him partially said that however the evidence that was being given by Wegener was not sufficient. Okay, he did try to make up some uh, stories about what should be the force and so on and so forth. However, it is now accepted that the plates carrying the continents do move across the Earth's surface. Ironically, one of the chief outstanding questions is the one Wegener failed to resolve. And what was that? What is the nature of force propelling the plates? Now we know, though, no, uh, thanks to plate tectonics, that it is these. Uh, uh, convectional cells, convective cells rather, as far as the mantle is concerned, which lead to that. But Wegener, unfortunately, was not able to put this as a larger theory. Okay, As uh, you can see here, that around 200 million years ago, which Wegener said, all of these continents were together to form a single supercontinent called as uh, Pangaea. Okay. They did split into two, and many a times, even I was under the impression that uh, they may have split geometrically. No, you'll see that uh, the Laurasia was a smaller continent as compared to the Gondwana, which had Africa and southern part of India and Antarctica and Australia and uh, South America as well. So you put all of them together, you would have a larger land continent. So it's so very interesting to note that today we have just seen in the hypsometric curve that uh, you have... Uh, more of land in the northern hemisphere and less of land in the southern hemisphere just 150 million years ago the situation was exactly opposite you had more of land in the southern hemisphere and you had more or less of land in the northern hemisphere as such uh, as wegener uh, projects that uh, the laurasia splits into europe and asia minus india of course minus india and the gondwana land uh, splits into South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Antarctica. Okay, you'll see that uh, this takes around, from this to this is going to take around 75 million years. From this to this, it takes around 50 million years. And uh, in the last 100 years, okay, you'll see that we have come to this particular status of uh, the present standings of these uh, continents as of today. Okay. Now, what was this jigsaw evidence that uh, we speak about? Francis Bacon, okay, I know, I, I, I hope most of you all know who Francis Bacon was. Okay, students studying humanities should be knowing who Francis Bacon was. The first people to note that west coast of Africa, okay, west coast of Africa and Europe seem to have a jigsaw fit with the eastern seaboard, northern and the so southern eastern border of the northern and southern america so if i if i bring africa and uh, 
uh, Europe on one side and Northern and Southern America on the other. And I try to bring them together. Uh, they, they come very close to each other and they literally fit into each other is what uh, this jigsaw evidence was pointing at. Uh, Wagner provided more evidences stating that the shape of the East Coast of South America fits into uh, the West Coast of Africa like a pieces of jigsaw puzzle. Alfred Wagner described how continents would fit into each other, forming a supercontinent that he had labeled, uh, which he was to uh, call as uh, Pangaea uh, eventually. And however, Wagner was trained as an astronomer and a meteorologist more, and therefore, many geologists, okay, this is of course human ego, okay, it could be scientists, it could be human beings, any other human beings. They did not think that he had the right background to judge or make geological theories. So uh, they dismissed his evidences okay, of jigsaw, etc. They said that, let, please bring uh, more concrete of these evidences. We don't agree to what you are saying as such. OK, uh, you have the South African geologist Alexander de Toit, uh, who maps out a northern supercontinent. Okay? Okay, this, of course, happens much, much later to uh, what uh, Wegner has to say, but he literally maps out the Laurasia and then he maps out the Gunwana also to explain the coal deposits. He used coal deposits, uh, which presumably indicate that the remains of the equatorial plants in the northern hemisphere. Laurasia formed when Pangaea broke up into two supercontinents. The other continent, supercontinent, was located in the southern hemisphere, and this was to be called as uh, the Gondwana. Okay, this is what people were referring to. Okay, if I'm going to bring, it's not exactly, but they said that, okay, you'll have to just twist and turn it to some extent and you push, sorry, you push Africa in this particular way and you push South America in this particular way. They do fit into the each other. It's not only that, you'll see that uh, when you bring Eurasia and North America together, um, the most striking of the evidence was uh, the claim that India does not belong to the place or the southern part of India particularly does not belong to the place where it is presently located. It was somewhere in the southern hemisphere okay, in the past geological history and it has traveled all that journey from the southern hemisphere all the way up to the northern hemisphere to be where it is and in the process building up one of the highest mountain ranges in the world to be later called as the Himalayas as such. The Antarctic continent was a bit north and then eventually it shifts to where it lies presently. And of course, Australia also drifts eastwards to, uh, to, to a position where it comes uh, to be placed today as such. Some continents such as the western border of Africa and the eastern border of South America seem to fit into together each, each, each other uh, to, to the best of its uh, fits. Uh, as such. Okay, uh, Wegner then started bringing around some, because geological people were opposing him, he starts trying to convince them by using a geological evidences. He tries to date the rocks in different parts. Rocks of same age, he says, and type are displayed on either side. Okay, you find the ones in the Amazon basin and of course, the Congo Basin in Africa. Okay, these rocks happen to be of the same age. Okay, giving a doubt, and uh, uh, which which actually uh, Wagner takes up as an evidence that uh, these two continents could have been together. Okay, then you'll see that the trends of mountains in the eastern parts of USA. Okay, the mountains here, eastern parts of USA, are very much similar to those in the northwestern part of Europe somewhere here, okay, these ones, okay. Then uh, Dacial deposits, which are found in Antarctica, South America, India, which are now thousands of kilometers apart, however, rank and rate to be of the same period. So these are uh, geological evidences. Besides that, of course, striations showing the same orientation when the continents are reunited are found in Brazil and West Africa. What are striations? These means series of ridges and furrows or linear marks uh, uh, are, are found. These are obviously geomorphological uh, features. This could be happening out of uh, 
the glacial retreat in these areas as well. So while the glaciers would could have retreated, they would have uh, scratched the surface in that particular area. So uh, what happens? What Wagner says that okay, you had glaciers here together. Okay, it scratches it. Then this breaks into two. Okay, but you can say that this line on one side can be continued on the other side of a continent which presently is uh, thousands of kilometers apart but if you bring them together you can fit them into what is called as a jigsaw fit so geological evidences rocks is one the mountains the types of mountains the glacial deposits and of course the striations caused out of the glacial deposits okay of course he had a lot of things further to say as such but uh, we are closing into our time for the day for the day as such and as a consequence i will uh, end the show here and uh, we will stop it for the day and uh, having said that i will first uh, while you think about uh, the questions you may have for me i'll just once again run through these attendances So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can post your questions in the comment box now. I've already, I do have your attendance recorded. So, uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, that should be it for the day. And uh, possibly next week onwards, we would be uh, meeting offline and uh, let us have an interaction uh, with each other if you have no further questions please allow me to uh, end the broadcast and uh, that's all from my side uh, somebody has posted up a question here uh, so my yesterday's question Akhil, Akhilesh, i don't remember your yesterday's question uh but then there is one more question sir we say that these plates are moving today also yes definitely they are moving today also this is the question okay yes they are moving today but as i said the scale at which they move is so 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 slow that we hardly uh, imagine it uh i'm very sorry akhilesh i am not able to recollect the question that you had posted yesterday so I'm, I'm very sorry I did not I did not even bother to look it up and I'm not it and that's why I'm not able to remember that particular uh, question as such. anyway I'll uh, give it a try today and uh, possibly we should have an answer uh, next time uh, that's all for the day uh, have a good and great weekend see that you stay home stay safe and uh, we'll meet next week <laughs>